The game opens with a cutscene showing a horde of wasps being beamed into Springfield. Thing is, they're not only wasps, they're cameras too. One of these wasp cameras enters the Simpsons family home, where it is swiftly pimp slapped by Homer and then stomped on. This is a scene that plays right before the game's menu screen, and when you start a new game, you're brought right back where you left off, with Homer inspecting a couple of coins that were released from the wasp camera he just destroyed. An ad then comes on of Krusty promoting a new and improved Buzz Cola, which Homer, in classic fashion, feels compelled to go out and buy. Level 1 takes place in the suburbs of Springfield on a typical sunny day. Homer talks to Marge, who tells him to go out and buy some ice cream, which works great for him since he was already going to the quickie Mart to get the Buzz Cola. This is when the first mission starts, and it's pretty simple. You drive to the Quickie Mart, speak to Apu, he gives you the stuff, you collect it, then you hear Bart say this. Congratulations, Homer. Mission complete. Go back home and talk to mom to start the next mission. The next few missions are just Homer carrying out busy work, getting Lisa's science project to her before Principal Skinner gets there, returning items he borrowed from Ned Flanders and for some reason left all over town, blowing up Smithers' car with the Plow King so he won't be able to catch him late for work, you know, the usual errands. That's what you get for expecting me to do the job for which I am paid. After a busy day at work, Homer returns home and watches a news report stating that Springfield citizens are infuriated by the appearance of the WASP surveillance cameras. These miniature cameras are an outrage. Spying on our women's dressing rooms, bathrooms, and locker rooms is unforgivable. I think I speak for all Springfielders when I say, where is the sexy footage? On a seemingly related note, black surveillance vans have also started showing up in town, which robs Homer the wrong way, so he decides to follow one of them to see who's responsible. After seeing the van end its journey at Mr. Burns' mansion, Homer figures he must be the one behind all this, and so he rushes to tell Marge about it. Unfortunately for him, Marge is far more interested in getting a violent video game off store shelves, and so after helping Helping her with that, he's left to deal with Mr. Burns on his own. This involves him racing Smithers, who was apparently already able to get an exact replica of his car made. Either that, or he just got one of those magic spanner things. Anyway, you race him to Burns' mansion, and when you get there, Homer tells Mr. Burns that he knows all about what he's doing with the black vans and wasp cameras. At which point, Mr. Burns informs Homer that 1. The wasp cameras have nothing to do with him, 2. The black vans are actually pizza delivery vehicles, and three, Homer is fired. I'm a class five idiot. Enter level two, you're now playing as Bart, and it's set in downtown Springfield. Bart really wants to get the new Bone Storm game, but seeing as Marge destroyed a bunch of the copies from before, his search ends up unsuccessful. That is, until he finds out that Professor Frank has collected copies of the game and is using them to power his giant robot dinosaur, Truckosaurus. Frank tells Bart he still needs a few more parts to get the robot fully operational, and so Bart sets off to collect a radio, a satellite dish, and a blender. Bing bang boom, kill a few road users so their cell phone signals won't interfere with the robot, and you got yourself a Truckosaurus. In the next cutscene, Bart goes to see the thing, but it turns out a 20 ton, 4 story tall, fire breathing robot dinosaur has the potential to be a little dangerous, and so Bart has to make a quick escape, all the while still being watched by a wasp camera. But Bart might have actually been better off had he just stayed there, because once he escapes, he's abducted by aliens in a green mist. Enter level 3. You're playing as Lisa, the level takes place in the harbour area at sunset. She's trying to find her missing brother. She asks comic book guy, he doesn't know where he is. She asks Millhouse, he doesn't know where he is. She asks Professor Frink, he doesn't know where he is. She asks Grandpa Simpson, now he doesn't even know where he is, but he says he thinks Bart might be in a strange black sedan he saw nearby. So of course Lisa takes the most logical course of action. She buys a school bus and rams into the car repeatedly until it blows up. Now assuming Bart was in there, she just made the worst series of decisions in her entire life. But luckily for her, not only was Bart not in the vehicle, Nobody was in the vehicle, it was a ghost car! She then talks to Chief Wiggum, who tells her to go to the Squidport. When she gets there, she asks the captain if he knows where 
Bart is, he says he saw Bart in a black limo, but not just any black limo, this black limo. And despite it being very evident very quickly that Bart is not in this vehicle, she proceeds to chase the limo down and blow it to smithereens. What is it with Lisa and blowing up vehicles? Are you okay, child? She returns to the captain, he says he saw Bart board the boat, she goes on the boat, she finds Bart, the day is saved, all is well, the game's over, roll credits. Psych! Bart cannot speak English. Bart, how old are you? What's your favorite catchphrase? Kiss my grits. Bart has forgotten who he is, there remain wasp cameras all over Springfield, and still nobody has spoken to Lisa about her vehicular homicidal tendencies. All is most certainly not well, enter level 4. You're playing as Marge Simpson, you're back in the suburbs, but now it's dark. Marge consults Chief Wiggum to figure out what has happened to Bart, and Wiggum responds by saying, get me some donuts. So after she gets the donuts, Wiggum tells her to speak to Cletus. So she speaks to Cletus, and Cletus says, get me some ketchup. So after she gets the ketchup, Cletus tells her about the crop circles that have been appearing on his farm. Marge decides she needs to speak to someone older and wiser about this, so she heads over to the cemetery to speak to Mole Man, who then tells her to speak to Grandpa Simpson because apparently he knows a thing or two about crop circles. So she heads over to Grandpa Simpson, he explains everything that's going on, Bart is saved, the wasp cameras disappear and they all live happily ever after. The game's over, roll credits. Psych! Grandpa Simpson cannot speak English. You darn darn ricket and crop circles and banging agri Oh dear. So she has to run out and get his meds so he can start talking some goddamn sense. In the next cutscene, we see Marge give Grandpa his medication and then ask about the crop circles. He describes them as looking like the same symbol that appears on the new Buzz Cola. So Marge goes back home and shows Bart a can of Buzz Cola which snaps him out of his trance. He then reveals that the Cola is a mind control agent he was given up in the alien spaceship. Upon hearing that the Cola is responsible, she asks Apu if he knows where it's coming from and he says he has no idea. So Marge responds by chasing down and blowing up three cola delivery trucks in a fit of rage. At least we know where Lisa got it from, it seems to run in the family. Level 5 baby, we're playing as a poo, we're back in downtown Springfield and we're trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Now a poo's focused on finding out who's responsible for the cola trucks, so he speaks to Snake to see if he can use his criminal connections to get more information. In exchange for the info, Snake has a poo help him carry out his community service and crimes, and then tells him that the cola trucks are registered to the Natural History Museum. So Apu and Bart get together to head over there, and in the next cutscene, they find that the mind control cola is coming from a meteor. And if you're thinking this must be as wacky as this story gets, you've got another thing coming. After a quick debacle with the cola-infused dinosaur skeleton, Bart and Apu find the aliens Kang and Kodas talking in the museum bathroom. They eavesdrop on their conversation and discover that the citizens of Springfield are unknowingly the stars of Foolish Earthlings, an intergalactic reality show which is filmed via the wasp cameras. The aliens also reveal their plan to boost the show's ratings by releasing the evil cola into the water supply and providing everyone in Springfield with free lasers. Guns. You've got to prevent the aliens from putting laser guns in the hands of cola drunk townspeople. <laughs> Why? That sounds hilarious. I'd watch that show. Tell you what, you're a bad little boy. Now for level 6, Bart is back in the building. The date is October 30th, one day before Halloween. Bart goes to Apu and asks for his help to foil the alien plot. Apu helps him, they stop the aliens, save Springfield, Harmony is brought back to the Earth, the game's over, roll credits. Psych! Apu cannot speak English. I'm sorry sir, but I cannot speak English. I only speak Hindi. Well, you're just scared of being vaporized by the space monsters. Up down, up down, uh, go hot dog, butter my undershirt, blah blah blah. So Apu's out the game, he's too scared of what might go down. Bart's on his own on this one. Bart figures he needs to find a way to get the word out, so he goes to Krusty to tell him what's about to go down in the hopes that he can broadcast it on television. Krusty does not believe him, so Bart heads up to the observatory to speak to Professor Frink, so hopefully he can find some proof to show Krusty. Frink tells Bart that the lasers are being hidden in duff trucks, so Bart chases down one of the trucks, heads to the duff brewery, and gets his hands on a laser gun. Bart then bumps into Principal Skinner and tells him all about what's going down. Alien. 
Indians are distributing deadly lasers all over Springfield. We gotta warn everybody. All we've gotta do, young man, is get that illicit goo gaw out of your hands. Clearly, you forgot the school's zero tolerance policy on lasers. Skinner then proceeds to confiscate the laser gun from Bart, despite the fact that this is not on school grounds, this is not within school hours, and he has no jurisdiction here. Surely, this is illegal, right? With Skinner having taken the only proof Bart had to show to Krusty, Bart proceeds to take the most logical course of action and murders Principal Skinner. Now that I can guarantee is illegal. After getting the laser gun back, he takes it to Krusty who finally believes him, but who also reveals that it's too late. Multiple free laser gun stands have already been set up all over town. So Bart buys the supervillain car from Kearney, destroys all the stands, and then drives over to Homer to tell him that the aliens have taken over the Duff Brewery. The aliens were also the ones who previously abducted and brainwashed his child, but Homer decides that now there's beer involved, now it's personal. Homer and Bart race over to the Duff Brewery and in the next cutscene the alien spaceship is shown emerging from the ground and the aliens reveal that the evil Buzz Cola has spread through the Springfield water supply and is resurrecting the dead. I told you you had another thing coming, I told you. Enter level 7. We're playing as Homer once again, we are back in the suburbs of Springfield, it is Halloween night and zombies, ghouls and ghosts roam the streets. Now let me be honest, if this was the sort of game I was looking for. I would have just stuck with Scooby Doo. Homer stocks up on supplies to fend off the zombies before discovering that the alien spaceship is parked up at the Springfield Elementary playground. He then follows an alien sports car to the nuclear power plant where he finds Professor Frink, who reveals that the alien's weakness is nuclear waste. Which doesn't surprise me, I feel like everyone's weakness is nuclear waste. So both he and Frink drive a nuclear waste barrel to the spaceship so it can be sucked up by the tractor beam and damaged the ship. Unfortunately, this alone is not enough to take out the aliens, so he has to repeat this process with his own car, Snake's car, and Grandpa Simpson's car respectively. Grandpa Simpson is sacrificed, the spaceship blows up, crashes to the ground, the aliens plan is foiled, the Simpsons have saved the day, Homer is now an intergalactic celebrity, all is well, game's over, roll credits. And that's the story of the Simpsons hit and run. It was an absolute mess, and I I loved every minute of it.